Alma. Cool. Are you ready for the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference? Yeah. What do you expect to happen there? Um, I expect to get a lot of new knowledge. All right. Are you ready to lead? Do you mind pulling the yes. Phone, please? Thank you. Never been more ready. So they're leaving. Wait, is it 4:30? Yeah, 430. we're leaving at 4:30. Oh, okay. All right, have a have a wonderful uh, trip. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. This week's episode features upper school student reflections from the recent trip to this year's Quaker Youth Leadership Conference, hosted by Carolina Friends School in Durham, North Carolina. This year's trip was extended to include tours of Guilford College and UNC Chapel Hill, guided by BFS alum, and visits to historical landmarks along the Underground Railroad. The trip was arranged by Marna Harity, and the video is filmed by Paul Romano. But first, our community announcements. Tonight at 4 and 7 p.m. and tomorrow at 3.30 and 7 p.m. will be the middle school play, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It has a wonderful story, a big cast, and great sets. It's a must-see. Online tickets reservations are available on the homepage of the BFS website and parent dashboard. A film screening and discussion of the award-winning film, I Am Not Your Negro, based on the writing of James Baldwin, takes place on the Pearl Street Meeting House on Tuesday, February 13th. It starts at 6.30 p.m. and is part of the PAP Black History Month celebration. There will be no school on Monday and Tuesday, February 19th and 20th for President's Day holiday. The all-school PAT Black History Month celebration is on Friday, February 23rd. Read up on the events on the lobby bulletin board. Carol, the Panther wants to see you at the game. So check out all your favorite Panther team's schedule by going to bfsathletics.org. Come and show your blue pride. Blue pride runs deep, friends around the world. Anik, can you tell me a little something about our Quaker Youth Leadership Conference and our trip to North Carolina? When we first arrived in North Carolina, we stayed at New Garden Friends School, and that was two days prior to the conference. And when, while we were there, we went out into town and we explored different places and we got tours of different colleges such as Guilford College and UNC by um, BFS alumni. What college did you like the best? Um, I probably like North Carolina Chapel Hill the best. It was really nice and relaxing. And our tour guide, which was um, an alumni from Brooklyn Friends. Sierra Vines gave a wonderful tour. You, I guess here we are. Where? Friendly Avenue. <gasps> it doesn't get more quicker than that. <laughs> I enjoyed being able to see the Quakerness in Greensboro, being able to go to like Guilford College, getting to go to the Civil Rights Museum, that was a lot of fun. We learned a lot about um, North Carolina and we like went to different places that were stops on the Underground Railroad, so that was cool. We went to the Civil Rights Museum, which was really interesting. 
the, the tree itself is a tulip poplar. What's special about this tree is that for a pretty long period of time, and by that I mean over the last 40 or 50 years, students have been coming back here, professors have been coming back here and telling the stories about the Underground Railroad. It's not the case necessarily that folks hid in this specific tree, but that this tree saw what was happening. It was here on back in segregated south. This was the white side of Greensboro. Beyond literally the tracks was the black side of Greensboro, but there were three or four active African-American communities around Guilford College. And then we went to the um, school that was hosting the conference, which was Carolina Friends. And we um, went there and we put all our stuff away for the first day and we got organized into groups by our name tag and a dinner group that we would be sitting with and it also had our service um, that we were going to be doing for the trip. So after we arrived we had dinner with our dinner groups and for the most part um, no one at our school was in the same dinner group so we were with completely new people. I met some friends at my table that I still talk to, that I follow on social media. At first, I was nervous about eating with a bunch of new people I don't know, but um, we all got pretty comfortable with each other, and we were all just making really funny jokes at the table, and it almost felt like a family in a way. What was your favorite thing about the conference itself? It helped me discover how different schools approach talking about social issues, I guess, because Working Friends does provide a lot of days like Privilege, Privilege Day or um, the Community Issues Conference, but it's you're sort of like with the same people and perhaps they're talking about their experiences in Broken Friends, which is just one school that you get to see every day, but by meeting new people, maybe they have their own story because each school is different. And I was surprised by the atmosphere. It was um, very positive, very welcoming, and I enjoyed it a lot. We went to see a performance um, by a band whose name I'm kind of forgetting. Like, Is that Pierce Freelon? Yeah, it was. And the Beast? Yeah. Oh, the Beast. The Beast. Yeah, yeah that one. Um, and um, at first he talked about some of the work that he was doing in other countries, which I thought was really fascinating. And he also mentioned his mother a lot. And I just thought the connection between his mom and how that influenced him to do some of the work he did was really cool. And he um, put on a show with his band for us at the end of talking about all of his work. And it was really fun. And I got to connect with some of my friends from school and some of my new friends on the dance floor. Now motherland was the boom, where the music we love was developed and bloomed. Rhythm, syncopation, improvisation was used to make up those African grooves. But then we moved, or rather we were removed. And through spirituals, they recreate our music anew. They say, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. So we took the abuse that came back with the blues. Then the blues moved back. Some other fun things from the conference was that, that we also did icebreakers also. I forgot to mention that on the first day. We did icebreakers, and they were really cool. Um, all the chaperones left the room, so it was really just a bunch of kids who didn't know each other who were getting to know each other, and that was really cool. We had a talent show where, um, you know, people from different schools and different grades, and even some of the faculty, um, had participated in the talent show, and it, it was just really cool to see, like, so many people doing what they love to do, and them being supported by the rest of the, um, the rest of you know the audience so it was just a nice feeling to have i got to see the different talents that a lot of kids had which included like poems creative writing dances singing so that was fun um, even from like the beginning icebreakers to the workshops at the end i felt really trusted um, we were given a lot of independence like uh, during the workshops, which I led with three friends, there weren't any teachers in the room, and the workshops went well, and we were trusted to actually be doing what we were supposed to be doing. Personally, going to the group called the Asian American Experience is being more aware of what it means to be myself and like noticing, I guess, sort of microaggressions that happen towards Asian Americans. I went to a food bank and I was with 
about 15 or so other people from QILC, and then there were a bunch of other people who lived in the area. Um, and we sorted potatoes, and it was really fun. And then everyone in my group, we just talked about like the stars and planets, and it was just a really fun experience. Durham's Rescue Mission, which is a thrift store in North Carolina, and I sorted out their clothes and put them on different hangers, and I also organized them through sizes. There was this one girl from Friends Seminary who I'm really close with. We're actually going to hang out soon. And it was really cool to be, be able to bond with someone over doing service work, I think. It was different than just talking to them because we were also talking about what we were doing and the impact it would have. For the last day of QILC, we had... Um, presentations and groups that were led by students, um, not any chaperones or teachers, which I thought was really cool. And I personally did one on colorism. It's a topic that I'm really passionate about and everyone there was willing to talk about it. And also the people that showed up, they were really different from one another. Like there were like black people and white people and there were Asian people and people of different genders also. Um, and I thought that mix was really cool to have in the room for talking about such a topic that affects everyone. I really enjoyed giving a workshop with Ima on Saturday morning. It was about LGBTQ Latinx identity and it was really fun because even though we didn't have a lot of time to prepare it, we kind of figured out how to do it. It was a very low pressure environment so it was okay that like what we did was okay and good and fun. What do you think you're taking back with you from QYLC? It's a great question. I think that I'm taking back um, a greater sense of community and bonding. And I think at QILC, everybody was just so supportive of each other. I feel like the leadership aspect of it was actually well put in place. Um, I actually feel like I gained tools to be a better leader. Youth can take leadership roles and work towards progress. While talking to everyone at the conference, they were all from different Quaker schools, and just seeing how a Quaker community of kids could really um, bond over the fact that they're Quaker and, I mean, that they go to Quaker schools at least. Think that outrage is a sign that your heart and your conscience and that still small voice, it's still working. It's not dead yet. You look at it and you're like, I know that it doesn't have to be this way. It can move you to want to get up, to want to rise up, to want to look out, to want to reach out, to want to connect, to network, to organize, to move. I came away from the conference thinking about Quakerism completely differently. We have this like oversimplified version of it. You're supposed to have good values, but you're sort of supposed to do it in a way that like doesn't rock the boat too much. I think that a lot of people mistake belief in nonviolence or pacifism for non-recognition of all of the reasons why you can and should be enraged. And I didn't really see it that way before QILC. I sort of thought like there are parts of this that I'll find interesting and then Quakerism is sort of like the part that's like there but like I don't really care about it. But like I came away feeling completely different about Quakerism and I think that it's actually mostly just about like integrity and like listening to each other in a sense. I think that a lot of people at this school um, see silence as silencing and I don't think that that's the original purpose of silence at all. Um, I think it's actually the opposite that when we're in Quaker meeting we have a place to speak and yes we can speak whenever outside of Quaker meeting too, but I do think it makes you listen in a different way. And I think that we as a community should value that space. There was a lot of, you know, openness there and it made you feel like you belonged there. So I want to bring back that sense of, you know, a welcome in feel. I, I want to, you know, make things more comforting for a lot of people going through certain things that, you know, and make them see that they're not alone. 
power of being open because I saw that there are certain people who were very open and very welcoming to everyone and they really changed the whole mood of the the whole conference and like really helped make it a community so it was just a few people who are very like welcoming and that had a powerful impact on the whole conference. I'm gonna bring back the idea of storytelling and being able to tell your story and not being afraid to tell your story because a big part of being Quaker is the silence but also speaking up for yourself and speaking up for what's right. Um, this question, forgive me for asking you, it may be um, very difficult for you to answer. What was your favorite meal of the trip? Um, uh, probably the, I think, oh, that's hard. Um, probably the breakfast that we had at New Gardens Friends School. Um, it was very nice. It was also very different. I never had um, pumpkin and chocolate chip pancakes before. My definite favorite that I keep thinking about was um, Krispy Kreme after we had barbecue at Stamey's and that was okay, but then our bus driver surprised us and took us all to Krispy Kreme and the red light was on, so the donuts were fresh, they were delicious, and I'll be going to Krispy Kreme all the time now. Okay, so they had crazy meals. On the first day, they had like 25 different lasagnas. Like, I didn't even know lasagna could okay. be made in such different ways. We um, went to this diner that was famous for its biscuits, and the biscuits were like the size of my face. Like, cause the one, the biscuits were so big, and they were only 125, and the meal was so cheap, and I don't even know if it was actually good, but it was so well priced that I think my brain was telling me it was so good because it was such an amazing price. And I had eggs with potatoes and something else and something else, and then I had there was a huge pancake that tasted like my grandmother's pancake, like you could taste the love in it. I had it with gravy, and normally I got the gravy, like, cause like the gravy I've seen in my life has been brown, but it was this white gravy, they covered it all over the biscuit, and at first I was like, uh, is that my order? But then like I bit into it and it was so good, like it was different from anything. I got a burger in Durham, which was really, really good, so I think that was my favorite meal. Everybody, everybody's been talking about those biscuits at the Smith Street Diner oh, so in Greensboro. Good. What do you have to say about those? Those are so good and they were huge. <laughs> so good. Thank you to everyone who made today's show possible. And remember to let your life speak.